Shweta Asan Das. Jayo Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janavalla Bhagiri Vardhari Gopi Janavalla Bhagiri Vardhari Jasura Nandana Braja Janaranjana <coughs> Jasura Nandana Braja Janaranjana Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jamuna Tira Vanachari <coughs> Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janna Balla Bhagiri Vardhari Gopi Janavala Bhagiri Vardhari Jasura Nandana Braja Janaranjana Jasura Nandana Braja Janaranjana Brajadana Dunjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jayo Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari <coughs> Sisi Radha Madhava Ki Sisi Radha Giridhari Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Paribraj Ki Jai Jai Shudra Sisi Mad This divine grace of Ai Charanar of Inda Bhakti Varanta Swami Shri Pupad Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Paribraj Ki Jai Jai Shudra Sisi Mad his divine grace, Shri Bhakti Saranta Saraswati Gosam Maharaj, Pupar ki jai, Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vrind ki jai, Grantara Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Samvira Vakti Vrind ki jai, Go Brahmanandi, all glories to the sum of the votees, all glories to the sum of the votees, all glories to the sum of the votees, all glories, all glories, Sisi Guru and Sri Gauranga, Sri Akadasi Bratta ki. Mm. 
So this morning, reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, 6th Canto, it's the 4th chapter, text 47. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Individual words, words. Aham, Ivasam, Ivagri, Nanyat, Kinchantaram, Bahi, Samgyana, Matram, Avyaktam, Prasuptam, Iva, Vishvataha, Aham, Ivasam, Ivagri, Nanyat Kinchataram Bahi <coughs> Samgyana Matram Avyaktam Prasuptam Iva Vishvataha Aham Ivasam Ivagri Nanyat Kinchataram Bahi Samgyana Matram Avyaktam <coughs> Prasuptam eva vishvataha. Aham evasam evagri. Nanyat kinchataram bahi. Samgyana matram avyaktam. Prasuptam eva vishvataha. Anyone like to chant? Can I chant Hare Krishna? Yes. Thank you. Go ahead, please. I've been waiting for this. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Aham meva samayva gre. Aham meva samayva gre. Nanyat kinchin tarambahi. Nanyat kinchat tarambahi. Sangyana matram avyaktam. Avyaktam. Prasuptam eva vishvataha. Prasuptam eva vishvataha. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Anyone else? Synonyms. Aham. I, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. <coughs> Eva, only. Awesome. Was. Eva, certainly. Agree. In the beginning. Before the creation. Na, not. Anyat, other. Kincha, anything. Antaram, besides me. Bahi, external. Since the cosmic manifestation is eternal, excuse me, since the cosmic manifestation is external to the spiritual world, 
the spiritual world existed when there was no material world. It's a lot of things packed into that one word, but he isn't it? Let me just unpack it all. Okay, samgyana matram. Only the consciousness of the living entities. Abhyaktam. <coughs> unmanifested. Prasuptam. Sleeping. So is anyone prasuptam during class? Not yet. Maybe open that door a little bit. A little crack in the door. A little bit. Okay. Eva. Like. Vishvataha. All over. Translation and purport by Srila Prabhupada. <coughs> So who's speaking here? Um, good, very good. <laughs> Before the creation of this cosmic manifestation, I alone existed with my specific spiritual potencies. Consciousness was then unmanifested just as one's consciousness is unmanifested during the time of sleep. Please repeat. Before the creation of this cosmic manifestation, <clears throat> I alone, I alone existed with my specific spiritual potencies. Consciousness was then unmanifested just as one's consciousness is unmanifested during the time of sleep. Purport. The word aham indicates a person. As explained in the Vedas, nicho nichanam chaitanas chaitanam. Katupanishad. The Lord is the supreme eternal among innumerable eternals and the supreme living being among the innumerable living beings. The Lord is a person who has impersonal features, as stated in the Bhagavatam 1 to 11. Vadanti tattvabhidas tattvam yajjnanam vadbhayam brahmeti paramatmeti bhagavaniti shabdite. Learn it, transcendentalists, to know the absolute truth. Call this non dual substance Brahman, Paramatma, or Bhagavan. Consideration of the Paramatma in and impersonal Brahman arose after the creation. Before the creation, only the Supreme Personality of God had existed. As firmly declared in Bhagavad Gita 1855, the Lord can be understood only by Bhakti Yoga. The ultimate cause, the Supreme Cause of Creation, is the Supreme Personality of God who can be understood only by Bhakti Yoga. He cannot be understood by speculative philosophical research or by meditation, since all such processes came into existence after the material creation. Prabhupada also gave that reasoning when they said, oh, you cannot realize God by taking LSD. And Prabhupada said, well, LSD is something of this material world. How can you realize spiritual truth by taking LSD? So, mm, the impersonal localized conceptions of the Supreme Lord are more or less materially contaminated. The real spiritual process, therefore, is bhakti yoga, as the Lord says, bhakti mam abhijananti, 1855. Only by devotional service can I be understood. Before the creation, the Lord existed as a person, as indicated here by the word aham. When Prajapati Daksha saw him as a person who was beautifully dressed and ornamented, he actually experienced the meaning of this word aham through devotional service. Each person is eternal because the Lord says that he existed as a person before the creation, agre, and will also exist after the annihilation. The Lord is a person eternally. Srila Vishwana Chakravati Thakur therefore quotes these verses from Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th canto. Na chantir na bahiryasya na purvam na pichaparam purvaparam bahish chantar jagat yo jagat chayaha. Tam madvat majam avyaktam marcham lingam arhuksayam gopi kolu kale dhamna babandha parakritam yada. The personality of Godhead appeared in Vrindavan as the son of Maharaj, uh, Mother Yashoda, who bound the Lord with rope just as an ordinary mother binds a material child. There are actually no divisions of external and internal for the form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, such an Ananda Vigraha. But when he appears in his own form, the unintelligent think him an ordinary person. Avajanti Mam Buddha Madhusim Tanamasritam 9.11 Bhagavad Gita. Although he comes in his own body, which never changes, 
Mudhas, the unintelligent, think that the impersonal Brahman has assumed a material body to come in the form of a person. Ordinary living beings assume material bodies, but the Supreme Personality of Godhead does not. Since the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the Supreme Consciousness, it is stated herein that some jnana matram, the original consciousness, Krishna consciousness, was unmanifested before the creation, although the consciousness of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the origin of everything. The Lord says in Bhagavad Gita 2.12, Never was there a time when I did not exist, nor you nor all these kings, nor in the future shall any of us cease to be. It's on the battlefield of Kukshetra. Thus the Lord's person is the absolute truth in past, present, and future. In this regard, <coughs> Madhvacharya quotes two verses from the Matsya Purana, Nanavarno Hrishtvaiko Bahu Srisha Bhujurupat Ashileya tad anyatu sukshma rupam shiram vina asuptam supta eva cha militaksho bhavad darahi anyatra nandarad vishnau srischa lineva katyate sukshma tvena harau stanal linam anyad apipshite. Does anyone know those verses? Just checking. After the annihilation of everything, the Supreme Lord, because of his such an Ananda Vigraha, remains in his original form. But since the other living entities have material bodies, the matter merges into matter, and the subtle form of the spirit soul remains within the body of the Lord. The Lord does not sleep, but the ordinary living entities remain asleep until the next creation. Uh, Green Ananda Maharaj wants to explain that why this happens is we get tired trying to enjoy the material world for millions and millions of births, so Krishna gives us a rest. We so get so burnt out, trying and failing and trying and failing and trying and failing, millions of lifetimes, so just, just take a nap. Refresh yourself and go again. So that's why the soul just kind of just rests in the body of the Lord, then comes out and tries again. So... <clears throat> An unintelligent person thinks that the opulence of the Supreme Lord is non-existent after the annihilation, but this is not a fact. The opulence of the Supreme Personality of God remains as it is in the spiritual world. Only in the material world is everything dissolved. Brahmalina, merging into the Supreme Brahman, is not actual lina or annihilation, for the subtle form remaining in the Brahman effulgence will re return to the material world after the material creation and again assume a material form. This is described as Bhutva Bhutva Paliyate, Bhagavad Gita 8.19. When the material body is annihilated, the spirit soul remains in a subtle form, which later assumes another material body. This is true for the conditioned souls, but the Supreme Personality of Godhead remains eternally in his original consciousness in spiritual body. Om Agyanti Marandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chakshul Unminitam Nitaismai Sri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Marobistam Stapitam Nina Bhutale Swayam Rupa Gadamayam Dadati Swapadandikam Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nitha Nanda Shri Dvaiti Gadadhar Shiva Sri Gaur Bhakti Brinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Banchika Patru Bhashya Kripa Shindu Beva Chapati Dhanam Bhavani Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Namaha So by your good wishes and prayers, blessings, I'll try to say a few words. So uh, we'll start with this. Uh, there's one verse, according to Srila Jiva Goswami, from which the whole Bhagavatam expands. Who knows what that verse is besides Dravida? <laughs> what? Here it is, here it is. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, that's in the first canto of the Bhagavatam. Krishna is too Bhagavan Swayam. Now, from that one verse, expanded into four verses. You probably, though, who know those four verses, saw the beginning of this verse. Aham evasam evagre. And remembered what's known as the Chatur Shloki Bhagavatam, from which all the Bhagavatam expands. And I'm just going to read the uh, translations of this, just to read it. Okay? And this is uh, Krishna speaking to Lord Brahma after he shook his hands. Yes.
of these verses and purports. So if anyone wants that recording, I can provide it. Jannardin? Our own very Jannardin. There he uh, is. Shweta Asan. <laughs> okay. Very no, the nice. original Jannardin. I got the inspiration from Krishna. Mm. So it's a second canto, ninth chapter, text 33, 34, 35, and 36. Brahma, it is I, the personality of God, who was existing before the creation. That's the first line. When there was nothing but myself, nor was there the material nature, the cause of this creation, that which you see now is also I, the personality of Godhead, and after annihilation, that, re that what remains will also be I, the personality of Godhead. Of course, Prabhupada, long purports here. Uh, o Brahma, whatever appears to be of any value, it, if it is without relation to me, has no reality. No, it has my illusory energy, that reflection which appears to be in darkness. O Brahma, please know that the universal elements enter into the cosmos and at the time, at the same time do not enter into the cosmos. Similarly, I myself also exist within everything created, and at the same time I am outside of everything. In the last verse, a person who is searching after the supreme absolute truth, the personality of God, and must certainly search for it up to this in all circumstances, in all space and time, and both directly and indirectly. So that's your Chatur Shloki Bhagavatam. So in Prabhupada's Panam Mantra, uh, this Nirvishesha uh, Shunyavadi, and this is one purport where Prabhupada is hammering that Again and again and again, uh, it is the big. Uh, it's the big one. Impersonalism and is manifest in many different ways. And there's what's known as philosophical impersonalism and psychological impersonalism. You ever hear of that distinction? Philosophical means you just don't you you don't believe that the ultimate reality is a a person. It's something impersonal. And of course, you have. Uh, Vedic schools going back since time immemorial propounding this and and then in the West you don't have uh, you know your 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 card carrying impersonalist isn't a belongs to the Shankarite club or anything like that uh, they just have that uh, everyone in the material world practically speaking is pretty much an impersonalist because what is impersonal means it means Krishna's is not in the picture Krishna's not in the picture. For whatever reason, we've removed Krishna. We can try to argue him out of the picture, philosophically. The big thing, that's Hinduism, neo-Hinduism, that uh, let's make it easy. All these different forms of the Lord and demigods and everything are just, you know, something behind that. And that's just that energy. You know, and that's the Brahman. And everything comes from that. Everything comes out of it. But it's kind of interesting if it's impersonal, just like it was referred to here in the purport, how does something impersonal desire to become a person? Because desire is a symptom of personality, isn't it? Do you think that seat you're sitting on is desiring that you wouldn't be sitting on him right now? Or her? I don't know. It's a him or her. Huh? You know? Right. Exactly. That's the point. It's not personal. So uh, that, that does a very uni a universal or all accommodating understanding of impersonalism. Krishna is not there. Krishna has been erased, removed. In fact, there's a verse in the Bhagavatam where it says the living entity is uh, turned. What is that? Do we? Uh, by him. Yeah. It, it means turn, turn the other way. Like that. I can't see Dravida. He's not here. <laughs> why, why can't I see Dravida? It's because I've turned away. <clears throat> and as far as I'm concerned, he doesn't exist. So that's the material world. That's the second one. Oh, you, you turn away. You turn like that. And it creates fear. That's that by him. Uh, because of that, we're in a very fearful condition. And then, so philosophically, people try to argue in so many different ways. A great argument is they say it's beyond words. The Prabhupada says, it's interesting, they say it's beyond words, but they write more books about it than anyone else, right? But how, like that, so. But uh, Prabhupada, Nirvishesha Shunyavadi, because that's, that's destroying everything. It's destroying our Krishna, uh, a person's uh, chances of becoming Krishna conscious, and it's the basis of even a material life. Material life means we've got so many different things going on, but not Krishna. Krishna's not there. 
He's not there. And even we have some idea, uh, the idea of Krishna is not really who Krishna is. The idea that Krishna or God is someone who's meant to just supply us our sense gratification for drawing in the material world. So we've completely missed the point. Completely missed the point. Now, psychological, psychological atheism is you say you believe in God, but it really is during your day-to-day -day life, there's, God's really not there, you know? Just like they take, they take these polls and they say that most people believe in God. But who's following and who has an understanding? But they, they say they believe in God. Like that. Or another example would be just as far as empiricism. I remember Masada Puta was making this point in one lecture. Newton, Isaac, Sir Isaac Newton, excuse me, was a theist. He was a theist. And, uh, but his idea of God was something very impersonal. He didn't believe in Krishna or even in personal God. I mean, he kept it to himself in his writings because back then, you, if you said the wrong thing, uh, things got hot. Let's put it that way. Things got really hot. You became a human pakora like that. So, uh, so he didn't say too many things, but his idea was that creation was God. You know, so very impersonal, all the same, like that. So, so that, that's uh, psychological atheism. How much is Krishna really in front of us all day long? So, that's so. So in the purport here, uh, this, this is very important, this is making the point that Krishna is eternal, and he's saying, I existed uh, before there was anything else. And aham means a person. So he's, he's establishing the fact that uh, because they say, what is the verse in the 8th chapter um, of the Bhagavad Gita about uh, from um, avyaktam vyaktam apanam manyate mam abuddhaya? I got it. All right, Krishna. I got it. That's Krishna in the heart. Hmm? Seventh? Okay. Uh, I got that wrong. <laughs> Keep me humble. So they say that from the avyakta vyaktim, uh, from the unmanifested, the manifested has come. And Krishna is saying, no, that's not true. Not true at all. Don't think that. He said, I've always existed, and brahmano, brahmano hi patishtaham, uh, that uh, the Brahman, the impersonal, is, is resting on me, just as the sunlight rests or comes from the sun. You know? And who was it? Someone was uh, talking to Prabhupada, and they brought up this verse to this impersonalist, and the personalist said, no, uh, when Krishna says that in the Bhagavad Gita, he is the impersonal Brahman. So the devotee said, so Krishna is saying, I, the impersonal Brahman, and the, is the, I am the basis of the impersonal Brahman? That doesn't make any sense at all. It's ridiculous to say that. So Krishna didn't say that. No. So, anyways... The point is that Krishna's personality is eternal, and Prabhupada quotes one verse after the next, after the next, after the next. This nityo nityanam chaitanas chaitanam eko boho yovadanam, uh, that he's supplying the, the sarva kaman, all the desires of all the living entities. In this verse here, vidanti tattva vidas, learned transcendentalists, they know that the absolute truth is in three different forms, this uh, Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. And that Bhagavan is supreme, and Prabhupada points out in the purport that actually these uh, Paramatma and Brahman, they're not so much existent in the spiritual world, especially Paramatma. Paramatma is a form that only exists in the material world because Krishna is right in front of you in the spiritual world, but in the material world, we don't want to see him, so he hides in our heart. He's not going to give up on the relationship. Sometimes you hear about a relationship, and someone does, well, usually his parents. Kids may go away or something like that. I think I told the other, the, it was in class the other day about my brother. My older brother ran away. I think I mentioned that. So I, you know, I ran away too. Hare Krishna. Wow. <laughs> but uh, parents don't give up. Well, they don't give up on their kids. And that's just, they're wired that way. So uh, Krishna's like that. He's a supreme parent, supreme father, mother. He doesn't give up, so he, he comes in the heart. He stays with us as Paramatma. And then when we go back to the spiritual world, he's gone. Because Krishna is right in front of us. There's no, there's no necessity for Paramatma. Because what does Paramatma do? Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita in the 18th chapter. What's the Paramatma doing? 
You a witness? Okay. That's the, th- that's the 11th chapter, right? No, 13th chapter. In the 18th chapter, it says, He's in the heart and he is. That? Yeah, he's directing everything. Because how can we do it? We're a little tiny jiva. We're tiny little jiva. How, we don't even know anything about how to move the material energy. Think about it right now. We're tiny jiva in this body, and we're not. So much is going on, and we have no idea what's going on. So that's who's taking care of that? Who's taking care of our nervous system and our eyes and our digestion and this and that and our karma and what's going to happen? Who's Krishna. We're just floating along. We're like the passenger. We're the passenger in the in the car. So uh, uh, that's Krishna, and. Uh, and again, Prabhupada brings it up, I think, three times in the purport, this uh, bhakti amam abhijananti. He refers to it twice, and he actually quotes the verse. We want to understand that absolute supreme person who's beyond the material creation there has to be a spiritual process, and that's bhakti, devotional service. So he makes that point again. And uh, Prajapati Daksha, the hero of the chapter, the reason he was able to see Krishna was because of his devotional service. It wasn't by meditation or some other process. It's only by devotional service. And Srila uh, Vishnu Chakravati Thakur, he's explaining that that absolute supreme personality of God had appeared in Vrindavan as the son of Mother Yasoda and just being bound by, the, the Lord was bound with a rope like an ordinary mother binds a child. So that's Krishna appearing in this material world, but he never loses his divinity. We lost ours in the sense that it's covered. It's covered. In that sense, it's lost or forgotten. But Krishna never forgets his position. Uh, that's, uh, he tells that to Arjuna in what chapter? Many, many births you and I have passed. I remember all of them, but you have forgotten. Fourth chapter, right? Right there. Because Arjuna's saying, wait, and then he's, then that's what Arjuna goes, wait a second. You know, uh, we're here talking, we're contemporaries, and you're telling me that that millions and millions of years ago you spoke the same Bhagavad Gita to the sun god? Uh, what's going on here? It's like that. It's like uh, Mukunda saying, yes, I gave Bhagavatam class in uh, Satya Yuga, like that, on the bank of the Ganga. Don't you remember that, Dharma Sato? You and I were there. I said, no, I don't remember it. Hey, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how is that possible? So Krishna's saying he's eternal, he remembers everything, but we forget. The living entity forgets. Um, and another point in this uh, purport is that when it all ends, there's different kinds of annihilation. The first annihilation we all have a we're gonna have experience first of probably. What? Today? And you chose me to give class? Come on, someone else should have given class if this is the last Bhagavatam class we get. No, you're kidding me. There's a, there's a clock going on? There's another prophecy or something? Okay. They're considering as, as far as the oh, okay. danger of nuclear war. Yeah, okay. But I tell you, the real thing is our own death. That's the annihilation that's going to happen probably before Armageddon or anything like that. We're going to die. This, this universe right here, this world is going to go, this body. Then you have the day of Brahma. Well, you, you know, or maybe like that or something. Then you have the, the day of Brahma. Then you have the lifetime of Brahma. All these different annihilations. And then Bhutva, Bhutva, Paliyate. It happens over and over and over again. And when that happens, the uh, material nature... Uh, and the jivas are absorbed into the body of the Lord. But they don't cease to exist. Nothing ever ceases to exist. All energies of the Lord are eternal. The spiritual energy remains as it is, but the material energy is, is um, uh, manifest and unmanifest. Manifest and unmanifest. That's just nature. And the soul is not unmanifest, but as we said earlier, Prabhupada said he's, he's taking rest. Like that. And it's, uh, what is the word here? I, mean, I mentioned that earlier about sleeping in class. Uh, prasuptam, sleeping, like in an unconscious resting. 
And when the time comes, we start up again, and Krishna knows exactly where we left off. We have forgotten, but Krishna knows exactly where we left off, what our material desires are, what our karma is, and we just start up again. And this goes on and on and on and on until the jiva goes back home, back to Godhead. That's Krishna's arrangement. So, um, you'll see this, whoever you preach to, you'll you'll be able to smell impersonalism, right? Well, maybe some of the guests, you smell something else in the Krishna lounge, probably. <laughs> That's why the ways that work at the Krishna lounge are looking at me kind of funny. You'll smell. So, but impersonalism is just there. And it's in our own life, too. We're trained. We're, we're conditioned and trained to be impersonal. Krishna's just not there. Because the devotees of the Lord, you know, those who are Krishna conscious or conscious of Krishna, we mentioned this in last week's class, it's not a one-off one thing. I gave the example that Indian man who came to Prabhupada on the train or, or told Prabhupada he was sitting on the train and Lord Jagannath was outside his window coming along following the train. Wanted to impress Prabhupada that he was, you know, seeing Krishna. And Prabhupada just kind of looked at him and said, oh, now you've seen Krishna, serve Krishna. So that's not Krishna consciousness. When one's Krishna conscious, they're always feeling the presence of the Lord and always uh, uh, wanting to serve the Lord. That, that, that's the difference. One always wants to serve. So it, it works both ways. One who's always engaged in service and Krishna reveals himself. And then, uh, so that's what goes on eternally. Like that. Okay. I wanted to leave a little bit of time. Uh, yesterday was the disappearance day of Ramanujacharya. And one of the two things that we as Gaudiya Vaishnav took from that Sampradaya is service to the Vaishnavs. And I just wanted to read, if it's okay, if I may, uh, there's a little section here in Namasharanya's book. I imagine this is what you were referring to in class yesterday about the book. At the very, very end, Ramanujacharya's final instructions and he speaks so much about uh, serving the Vaishnavs and the devotees of the Lord. And there's some other writings, too. I couldn't find where I had seen those, if that's okay. This will just take a two, three minutes, the final instructions of Ramanujacharya, and then we'll open it up for any, any questions or comments. Okay. So what happened is uh, Ramanujacharya went into trance and was ready to leave. And then all his disciples started lamenting and crying and so on. So he came out of his trance and said, okay, okay, I'll stay, I'll stay. He said, uh, my dear children, why do you cry out in lamentation like uneducated men? Do you think this body can endure forever? I am, not, am I not fixed in your hearts for all time? Therefore, give up this useless wailing and understand the will of the Lord. To this the disciples all replied, O oh, Master, as always your instructions are perfect, nonetheless it is impossible us to bear the pain of separation which must surely overwhelm us if you leave us now. Out of pity for your children, we beg you to remain with us for some more time. In response to this request, Ramanuja agreed to stay with them for three more days. He ordered that all his disciples should come there, and when they were assembled, he delivered his final instructions. So this is it. Worship all Vaishnavas as you worship your guru. That's the first instruction. He doesn't worship Narayan or Sita. He said, worship all Vaishnavas as you worship your guru. He told them, have faith in the previous acharyas and never be controlled by the senses. Never be satisfied simply by worldly knowledge. Study the scriptures which describe the glories of the Supreme Lord. Transcendental knowledge can overcome the pushings of the mind and senses. Be indifferent to the promptings of the mind. Always relish the chanting of the holy name and qualities of the Lord. The best way to serve the Lord is rendering service to his devotees. Never, fo uh, never follow the ways of a Vaishnav for material gain. Always endeavor for purity. Every day, spend time in contemplating the greatness of the spiritual master, and every day study the teachings of the Vaishnava acharyas. Always associate with those who are surrendered to the Lord. 
Avoid those who teach paths other than devotional service and those interested in sensual pleasures. One who sees the deity as stone, the guru as an ordinary man, the devotees in terms of caste or bodily designation, charanamrita as ordinary water, the holy name of the Lord as a mundane sound vibration or the supreme Lord as one of the demigods is certainly destined for hell. hell. <laughs> yeah. When Yati Raj had finished speaking, the disciples questioned him further, asking how they should conduct themselves while in this world. Again, Ramanujacharya instructed them, one who has surrendered to Lord Narayan should not be concerned about his future. Depending always on the Lord's mercy, all duties should be performed as acts of devotion to the Lord and never for material gain. Study the Sri Basya and teach it to others. You know the Sri Basya was, is? Vedanta Sutra. You know, these two Acharyas, Ramanuja and Madhvacharya, uh, their principal preaching was also against impersonalism. It's just, I tell you, it's a disease. It's an epidemic. Pandemic, epidemic, you name it. My, you know, Nirvishesha Shunyavadi. So our 16 rounds a day is like uh, getting a booster shot, right, against the pandemic that's going around called impersonalism. Study the Sri Basya and teach it to others. This service is the most pleasing to the Lord. If this is not possible, then study the teachings of other devotees and then instruct some disciples. If you're unable to do this, then go to a holy place and reside there or go to uh, Yadavadri uh, and serve the Lord there. If you cannot do this, then remain where you are and surrender to your guru and meditate on Vaishnava mantras. If all of these are impossible, then simply seek out a pure-hearted Vaishnava and associate with him constantly. Discriminate carefully between friends, enemies, and those who are indifferent. Those who are Vaishnavas will be your friends. The atheists and blasphemers will despise and hate you. And he's speaking from experience. They tried to kill him a few times. Even the head pujari at the temple tried to kill him. You know how? It's right behind you. Poison the Charanamrita. Hmm? Wow. Hare Krishna. Didn't work though. So. Uh, and the worldly men will be indifferent. Ah, Hare Krishna is that just chanting and dancing. Who are they? I don't, you know, that, I don't care. Okay. Associate joyfully with the devotees, rigorously avoid the blasphemers, and never be disturbed by the materialistic plans of worldly men. Never flatter princes and worldly men seeking to earn your livelihood thereby. Remember that the Supreme Lord always takes care of those who are surrendered to him. Take shelter of him and have faith in him alone. If you follow these instructions, then you will never be separated from me. Why should one grieve over the disappearance of the temporary body? So, and then he just left. <laughs> so are there any questions or comments on Prabhupada's uh, purport on this, uh, as far as Krishna's position being eternally there before the cosmic manifestation, impersonalism, all these wonderful quotes in the purport. Anything anyone like to say or everyone's feeling just fine? Microphone. Something kind of funny because you mentioned Hinduism. Um, my Guru Marge defined Hinduism as an elaborate Vedic excuse to forget Krishna. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is this isn't a very important question, but it was a curiosity because I was thinking that. Through, throughout the course of reincarnation, when one takes new bodies, uh, he might take one body in one universe and then maybe a different body in a whole other universe and so on. But then in this case, uh, when I was thinking about how it's kind of like musical chairs or something, if that was the conception, it would be something like musical chairs where then at the end, uh, when that universe is, you know, when all the living entities in that universe then lie dormant, it seems... Although actually I guess all universes then... All the, yeah, I guess everything goes dormant at the same time, right? All the universes at the same time. So I guess that wouldn't really make a difference. Maybe that's my own answer. To the, the, I guess my, my question at one point was, is that even the case? I've never read that anywhere. 
uh, I don't think, I don't remember reading it specifically anywhere, that one does take birth and in different universes throughout, you know. Um, okay. Yeah, is there any re- so is my, there my reason to think that this is the you got a case? problem with this universe? You got a problem with this one that you want to go another one? It's not big enough for you? <laughs> yeah, I guess that's the question. Like, It is the smallest of all the universes. Does that bother you? You need to get to a bigger one? Yeah, I guess that's the question. Is is one universe sufficient for all the births one would need to take anyway? Would there be any reason for, you okay. know? Yeah. yeah. Now, you le- where is this said? Because I've heard it a few times. We don't jump to other universes. Oh. At least, you know, I mean, maybe one that everything merges into the body or something like that. But we pretty much stay in the same universe, up, down, you know, Abrama, Bhuvana, Loka. We stay in the same universe. There's, there's, there's plenty here for us to experience. We don't go from here, our next birth is into another universe. There's no reason for that. We stay in the same universe. So there's, there's, a, there's a lot to see, plenty to do, a lot of Maya. Plenty of maya to get into. Don't worry about it. And plenty of opportunities for devotional service. So there's no need to go to another universe as far as I, I that's what I've always heard. Has anyone heard anything different? Yes. Well, this, this has to do with the amazing revelation Prabhupada gave us, which is in the, in the CC also. I mean, the, the text of it. That Krishna's Leela are going on right now in different universes. And just like right, you know, right now, it's Janmashtami in some universe. And then he'll, he'll stay on that planet and do his basic Leela. But uh, then a moment later, there's another universe, it's Janmashtami. So my, my understanding is that when, it's from the, the Krishna book and other places, that when we leave our body, even if we're fully Krishna conscious, we usually need some more training to get fully trained up in our specific rasa with Krishna. But you mentioned that it's not so for the bajaris. They're training now. If you're perfect in bajari work, that's what you're, you're making the chua and you're doing the thing, right? You're personal service. But anyway, so that you go to the universe where Krishna's yes. appearing and you're a contemporary with him. And then you get trained up and then you, then you go back to God. Yes. So in that sense, there is yeah, that's like from one universe that's to another. There's a transference because yeah, you need yeah. to join Krishna's roadshow, wherever, whatever universe it's in. Yeah. So, so you got an out. Okay, you're good. <laughs> yes, Prakash. Prabhu. Uh, Prabhu says in the purport that even the uh, localized conception of God is uh, more or less materially contaminated. Could you? Uh, well, I mentioned that earlier about the Paramatma, mm. in the sense that it only exists in the material world. There's only there's only need for it in the material world because the Paramatma has to come with the jiva, but in the spiritual world, there's no Paramatma. So in that sense, it's a manifestation in this material world. Okay. Paramatma is not contaminated by the material energy, but it's only a thing of this material world. Okay, anything else? Yes. Would you like a microphone? Hmm? <laughs> I, I was wondering if you could, Jared Prabhu just mentioned if you're fully Christ of consciousness and you leave your body, you don't automatically, um, so the question is, to be fully, can you go back home just one lifetime, as Prabhupada says, or do you actually have to go to another universe and then act that out to go back? Well, it's right there in the Krishna book. Prabhupada explains that generally what happens, and and <clears throat> and it's brought up <clears throat> in uh, in the Bhagavatam and so on that the different varieties of devotees in Vrindavan, some of demigods that came, some were great sages, some of the residents of the spiritual world, and some were devotees who weren't completely perfect. And they that's what happens is you join the Krishna Lila, and then whatever little tiny tiny bit of whatever or just training is there, and then you finally go back to the eternal abode. But what's the difference between being with Krishna and Boma Vrindavan and being with Krishna and Goloka Vrindavan. There's no difference whatsoever, but there's a little little something there. So Prabhupada indicates that. You may you may be attracted to 
you know, that idea of getting saved from the demons, which you're not going to get in the Goloka Vrindavan. So there is a difference, you know, in, in the Boma Vrindavan. I mean, there, there's, the, there's the hint of demons. Prabhupada says the cloud comes, they think it's, it's uh, the bull demon, you know. But, but So there, there is that. But, but yeah, it's like the, it's the same uh, existentially, ontologically, if you're with Krishna on Boma Vrindavan, if you're in Goloka Vrindavan. Now, if Krishna offers you a chance to go and join his pastimes in some universe, don't go, ah, I'll wait it out. I want, I want to get to go back home, back to God indirectly. Don't do that, okay? Just say, I'm on, I'm on board. I'm on board. Take me, take me, take me. Take me, Krishna. Okay? Like that. So, so today is a fast day. Because we're, we're fast day, half day fast, because tomorrow is Baraha Dwan. Who's giving class tomorrow about Lord Baraha? Are you giving class? Gives class tomorrow. Okay, so a lot to talk about Lord Baraha. So today, and that's good. You got extra time to chant those 25 rounds on the Kadasi. Okay. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Oh, you have a question or a comment? Uh, can I ask a question? Is that a time? Uh, do you... I guess so. Okay. Right. Thank you. Yes, Prabhu. So you mentioned the Paramatma uh, seated in our heart. So that Paramatma is uh, localized Paramatma. Uh, that, is it partial reflection, or is it still is uh, of Lord Bhagwan, or how is it uh, when we say Paramatma is guiding? That's Krishna's. Uh, how would you please talk about it a little bit, or in short? If you can tell me. It's an expansion of Krishna. Plenary expansion of Krishna. It's Krishna himself, but he, he uh, expands into the heart of every single living entity. He's personally present. That's Krishna. That's how he is present in every living entity's heart. It's plenary expansion of Krishna. It's Krishna. And depending on one's relationship with the Lord, that a particular form of the Lord will appear in his heart. For most jivas, it's, it's, it's Narayan, it's Janardhan. It's called Janardhan in the heart. But for devotees, you may see Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda dancing in your heart. Right? Shaima Sundar, right? That's Krishna. You're in good hands, that's all you need to know. You're in very good hands. Krishna's in your heart. Like that. So, Thank you so much. Prabhu. So we, a very wonderful class. Hare Krishna. Thank you for chanting so sweetly the verse earlier. We can end here. All glories to Srila Prabhupada.